Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Doc May. Uh, today, we're going to discuss about profit planning and activity-based budgeting. Together with me is Mr. Francis Epino and So, our topic for today covers the following. For profit planning, that what the tools and the elements, processes and the contents. For the master budget, we have the steps, what are the benefits and the best practices for creating a master budget. For activity-based budgeting, we have its definition, the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, we also have the samples and the solution for the activity-based budgeting. And next is activity-based costing. What, what it involves and the example. So what is profit planning? Profit planning is a set of actions taken to achieve a targeted, targeted profit level. These actions involve the development of an interlocking set of budgets that roll up into a master budget. Profit planning aims to set a profit objective for a budgeting period. Also, it seeks to establish the main policy decisions regarding how to achieve the objectives. Tools of profit planning. Budgets are an important tool of profit planning. The profit plan through budgets results critical evaluation of many alternatives. These alternatives affect the future of the enterprise under conditions of uncertainty and risk. What is a budget? Budget is a detailed plan expressed in quantitative terms that specifies how resources, how resources will be acquired and used during a specified period of time. Next, we have the essential elements of profit planning. Number one, the mission statement. It indicates a brief summary of the business and its objectives. Next is the company information. It introduces the founders and their background information. Number three is growth projections. It outlines and quantifies the earnings of the business. Number four, what are the products or services? It describes what products and services are offered by the business. Process of profit planning. Number one, establishing profit goals. So you have to know how much profit are you, you want to earn for your business. Next is determining expected sales volume. So you have to project how much sales you're going to make for your company in a given period of time. Number three, estimating expenses. So you have to know how much you're going to expend for, a prod for your product or services to produce. Number four, determining estimated profit. So you have to know how much your prop you're going to earn for your business. Profit is the most important part of your business because if you don't earn profit, your business will not go, you will not go anywhere. So it is one of the 
one of the reasons why. It also uh, assists business owners with future decisions. So, the process for profit planning are these four. Establishing profit goals, determining expected sales volume, estimating expenses, and determining estimated profit. A profit plan is always created as part of a larger plan, such as a master budget or as a strategic plan, and should include the following information. So, the contents of a master budget includes the target market, who, whom you want to serve, is your target market, product or service pricing so you have to determine the product or service value that you want to serve your customers staffing number three, four is marketing and advertising so you have to offer your product or service to to your desired customers. Number five, collection processes. So you have to determine how are you going to collect the, the payments or the sales of your products or services. Business investment. So business investment involves the capitalization of the company and number seven is the operating expenses so you have to know how much are you going to spend for your products or services so that is the content of the master budget The steps to be taken to achieve your profit goals. Number one, determine a targeted return on investment. Start by setting a target net profit. Understanding how it is calculated is a piece the key to figuring out what is the right target for your business. Next, Calculate the target profit margin. You will need to achieve this profit goal. Take your projected net profit and add forecasted selling, general and administrative expenses, as well as interest and tax expenses. Number three, prepare a sales forecast by month and product line. Your target gross margin will determine the level of sales you need to strive for. The sales forecast is calculated by dividing gross profit by the gross margin percentage you strive to earn for your business. Number four, forecast cost of goods sold. Target sales less your target gross profit will determine the forecast cost of goods sold. Compare this target to previous years and make adjustments. You may find that, that you have to make productivity improvements and then again, have to determine whether additional investment are needed to realize those improvements. Number five, meet with your management team and develop a plan. Here's where you and your team agree on a specific actions to boost sales, improve labor productivity, and tighten supply and expense management. It can help to make specific people responsible for delivering results in their areas. Number six, execute your plan. 
closely monitor your progress in implementing your plan and adjust as necessary through the year. It's important to seek out and listen to the input from your employees when looking for innovative ways to improve your business and achieve your goals. Make sure that the employees know you want their ideas. So it's important that you have uh, coordination and consultation with your employees to achieve the desired goals of your company. Benefits of Profit Planning It allows you to create a target profit and, be, and build a detailed plan around it. For example, if your target profit for the year is 100,000, you can devise a strategy around achieving the goal by answering the following questions. How many items or units or services will I need to sell to achieve my goal? Number two, do I plan on reinvesting profits? What are the maximum costs? How much should I charge for my products or services? How many salespeople will I need to achieve my goals? Are there any places where I need to reduce expenses? Where do I want my gross profit margin to be? Once these questions have been answered, we are on a you are on your way to creating a sound business budget to go along with your profit plan. Number two, it is strengthens, strengthens the business overall. A profit plan is designed to be used with other financial projections, such as a business plan, financial forecast, or organizational budget. When you create a detailed profit plan, you can compare progress each accounting period to see how, just how close or how far you, you are away from your initial targeted profit. And more importantly, take corrective action to get back on track. Last, it provides owners, managers, and employees with clear objectives. It's only fair that all key employees are on the same page about the strategic goals of your business. It's difficult to hold an employer responsible for underselling if they have no idea or input into your profit planning processes. Bringing your employees into the process provides them with a key stake in the outcome and also give them a much clearer picture of expectations in your company. So you have to always involve your employees in your preparations about budgets and other uh, parts of your business. Best Practices for Profit Planning If you're a new business owner, chances are that you've created a rudimentary business plan and they didn't pay a lot of attention to profit. It was just what was left over after your expenses were subtracted from your revenue. But little profit planning is important even for a smaller business so you have to have a best practice for profit planning number one create a profit plan as part of a business plan a profit plan should always be part of a business plan or strategic plan planning for profit is impossible without using a complete budget approach for profit planning, which includes expenses budgeting and estimating production levels. 
Second, use a cash flow forecast to map out goals or targets. Once profit planning expenses budgeting are complete, create a cash flow forecast that provides the details of your plan. Not only does this give key players a guide to use, but it can also help to see where your projections are off, allowing you to make changes when needed. Number three, plan for profit first. Always define the, de the profit level you, you wish to achieve and then plan your expenses around, around it instead of the other way around. While this, uh, this may sound simple, in reality, many business owners estimate revenues and expenses. With operating profit, anything that's left over. By determining the profit that you wish to make and by planning for it properly, you're more or much more likely to, to achieve your goals. Last, hold yourself and others accountable. Having a strategic plan in place that includes a detailed plan for profit helps, helps to hold you, your managers, and your employees accountable. It's impossible to achieve a goal without knowing what goal it is you wish to achieve. Be detailed as you can and rely on your team to make it happen. So there's a saying that no man is an island. So you have to coordinate with each other to achieve the goals of your company. Here are some of the examples for, of profit planning. Number one, increase the investment in new product development in order to increase new product sales. So, number two, expand the regions within which existing products are sold. Number three, target areas of declining sales where it can, it can make the most sense to, to eliminate products or cut Cost. Number four, take steps to mitigate risk that may otherwise result in an unusually larger loss. Last, target bottleneck operations to increase product capacity of the business. So, that's for, the, that's for my topic about profit planning. And then I will turn you over now to Mr. Francis Cepino. Thank you. Activity-based budgeting is a budgeting method in which budgets are prepared using activity-based costing after considering overhead costs. Activity-based budgeting is management accounting tool which does not consider the past year's budget to arrive at current year's budget. Instead, the activities that incur the cost are deeply recorded, analyzed, and researched. Based on the outcome of the study, the resources are allocated to an activity. Using activity-based budgeting can help companies to reduce costs and as a result, squeeze more profit from sales. Advantages of activity-based budgeting. First, competitive edge. Activity-based budgeting system eliminates all sorts of unnecessary activities, which helps the business to save its costs. The saved cost results in the production of goods and services at lower cost than that of competitors. 
It also helps the organization to gain a competitive edge in the market. Second, business as a unit. This budgeting technique helps in viewing the business as a single unit and not in the form of departments. The managers or the top management prepare the budget for the business unit as a whole and not keeping in mind any single department as done in the case of other methods of budgeting. Third, elimination of bottlenecks. Budgets under activity-based budgeting are prepared after deep research and analysis. This study removes all the unnecessary activities of the business. By doing so, the business eliminates all sorts of bottlenecks associated with an activity and business functions are carried out more smoothly. Fourth, improves relationship. Activity-based budgeting system helps in improving the relation between the organization and its customers. The main aim of this budgeting method is to eliminate unnecessary activities and serve the customers with the best quality at best price. This enforces, indirectly, the employees of the company to serve the customers in the best way possible and ensure customer satisfaction. In return, the relationship between the organization and the customers improves. Activity-based budgeting offers many advantages. However, like every process, this too has its disadvantages as listed. First, requires understanding. Activity-based budgeting requires a deep understanding of various functional areas of the business. If the manager preparing the budget is incapable of understanding and evaluating the areas of business, it will lead to inaccurate budget preparation. Second, complex. Activity-based budgeting system is complex in nature. It requires research and analysis of various factors. This budgeting method comprises of estimation of demand, and based on that, it does the estimation of resources to be employed in various activities. Third, resource consumption. The process of budgeting in this method consumes a lot of resources of an organization. It needs to employ top officials for conducting numerous analysis. It is a very time-consuming task too. If these resources are employed in other operational activities, they can give better returns. How activity-based budgeting works? Keeping costs to a minimum is a crucial part of business management. When done effectively and not too excessively, companies should be able to maintain and keep growing their revenues while squeezing out higher profits from them. The activity-based budgeting process is broken down into three steps. Number one, identify relevant activities. These cost drivers are the items responsible for incurring revenue or expenses for the company. Number two, determine the number of units related to each activity. This number is the baseline for calculations. Number three, delineate the cost per unit of activity and multiply that result by the activity level. Example number one. Suppose company ABC expects to sell 1,000 units of its product over the next month and the product costs $5 to produce. Under activity-based budgeting, 
the company will estimate the cost of goods sold to be 5,000. 1,000 unit of product multiplying by the $5 product cost. Example number two. Company A anticipates receiving 50,000 sales orders in the upcoming year, with each single order costing $2 to process. Therefore, the activity based budget for the expenses relating to processing sales orders for the upcoming year is 100,000. 50,000 sales order multiplied by $2 cost. I discussed natin kanina that activity-based budgeting is a method in which budgets are prepared using activity-based costing after considering the overhead cost. Now, what is activity-based costing? Activity-based costing is a process of calculating the cost of products that accounts for indirect cost. It is a process of tracking resource use and pricing final outputs. The goal of activity-based costing is to assign specific resources to objects. It specifically identifies the activities that cost production costs to increase, helping team leaders make more informed pricing and manufacturing strategies. When is activity-based budgeting used? Businesses must analyze their goals and requirements to determine whether an activity-based budgeting system will make sense to implement. Activity-based budgeting is better suited to new businesses that lack historical costing data that more established businesses have. For example, a more established retail business such as Walmart has made changes to optimize its strategy for profitability over many years. Their profits are going to remain at a relatively even growth rate and they know exactly what their cost drivers are. On the other hand, a new startup doesn't have years of historical financial information at its disposal. It may be worthwhile for the new startup to inspect each cost driver and their corresponding activity levels to make more accurate financial projections.